moving on, uh, still have, uh, per capita income. This is another uh, trend that is not extremely uh, favorable for Michigan. Uh, what I've done here is to consider in 2009, it says 2008, but it is 2009, uh, the most prosperous states, the least prosperous states, and the Big Ten states, and using data from the Census Bureau's American Community Survey, I show the per capita income for all people who are 21 and over. So the District of Columbia is really very unusual with average incomes of 54,000, Connecticut 49,000, Maryland 47,000, and if you look at the Northwest Territory or Big Ten states, Minnesota is the state with the highest average incomes. Illinois has higher average incomes. Michigan now ranks fairly far down the list ahead of only Indiana. In Illinois and Minnesota, per capita incomes are 10 to 12 percent higher than they are in the state of Michigan. Michigan and the Big Ten states are clearly quite far ahead of the least prosperous states, Mississippi and West Virginia being at the bottom of the list. Uh, if you look back to 1940, which is the first year we can get data, from in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, Michigan had incomes 10 to 15 percent above the national average. Sometime in the 90s, Michigan sank to about the national average for household income, <coughs> per capita income. And now we have uh, incomes in Michigan that are about 8 percent below the national average. Similarly, for quite a few decades, Michigan had a lower poverty rate than the rest of the nation. That also changed around the year 2000 or shortly thereafter, and we now have a poverty rate of about 16 percent in Michigan compared to 12 percent in the, uh, 14 percent in the rest of the nation. Uh, I have a display here of uh, the economic status of Michigan and in the rest of uh, the nation, and if you look at per capita income for people uh, 21 and over, in 2009, in constant dollars, Michigan's per capita income was about what it was in 1970. So uh, there are some rather discouraging trends here. This shows the percent who are poor, the percent who are near poor, the middle class shown in blue, and the people who have incomes five times the poverty line or more shown in green. Incomes, of course, are very much linked to educational attainment. And when we take a look at Michigan compared to other states, we see that it doesn't fare all that well. There's some very many studies suggesting that the metropolitan areas with the highest incomes are those with the highest rate of college completion for their adult populations. Uh, and if we look at the states where the highest proportion of young adults, 25 to 39, with college degrees, again, the District of Columbia is kind of off the scale where uh, 62% of the people there, young people, have college degrees. Massachusetts very high at 47. We look at the Big Ten states, and again, the most prosperous state in terms of income, Minnesota, is the state that has the highest proportion of its young adults with a college attainment. Michigan ranks uh, rather low among the Big Ten states ahead of just Indiana, but quite far ahead of some of the states that have low proportions of young adults with educational attainments. These are discouraging trends, but I think there are some reasons to be optimistic. Let me very briefly move away from data and suggest that there are two currently popular strategies to increase employment in states and cities. And one that has been used frequently throughout the nation is to try to retain employers and attract new <coughs> ones through policies encouraging business. That is generally low taxes, land or resources, and job training <coughs> programs. And this uh, has, I think, a mixed record of success and non-success. Governor Milliken and uh, Mayor Young <coughs> did assemble 700 acres at the border of Hamtramck and Highland Park. And that is now where the, the, Highland, the uh, GM Hamtramck plant is, is producing the Chevy Bolt. Uh, Mayor Young also arranged for the expansion of the uh, East Jefferson Avenue plant, which is where Fiat is now successfully assembling the uh, 
Grand Cherokee. There are other examples that aren't so good. Uh, Ann Arbor provided a number of incentives to Pfizer, and within three years, Pfizer had closed. But it is a strategy that's widely used, and I think almost all municipalities and states feel an obligation to do it because firms will pit one state against another state. Another idea that has been uh, popularized by Richard Florida is the idea that we've seen huge changes in our industrial and employment makeup. And what you want are not necessarily those big factories. There aren't very many of them anymore. What you want is the creative class of individuals to move to your city or your state. And these would be individuals who are typically highly trained, but quite entrepreneurial and quite innovative. So we certainly see in the uh, computer world and the applications and the cell phones, iPods and so forth, those are the creations of individuals in the creative class. And supposedly, it's not so much to emphasize tax rates, but rather to encourage the creative class. So uh, the idea is quality of life makes a big difference to these young people, and they will go to places where there are, where there be bicycle paths, cultural entertainments, uh, uh, farmers markets, a friendliness to people who live alter in alternative lifestyles. Uh, that idea has been popularized, and here in Michigan we had a Cool Cities initiative uh, recently. I wonder, though, if there's not a third strategy, and that would be to capitalize upon the resources of an area while stressing business investments and in trying to attract the creative uh, classes that may be the secret to economic success in some areas. I think if you look at Michigan and you compare Michigan to some other states and look at what has happened, there are a number of reasons to be optimistic rather than pessimistic. Vehicle production is likely to increase in the United States in the future and around the world. There are going to be gradual or perhaps rapid changes in what we drive, what propel propels the vehicles we have. Michigan has a specialization in research and innovation concerning uh, vehicle manufacturing. Presumably, that will continue. Many foreign firms have already set up research and engineering shops in Michigan. We have a variety of new firms that either have recently come into the U.S. vehicle market or intend to do so. Fiat, Tata, Tesla, Fisker, Geely, and BYD. I haven't heard much about them recently. Uh, quite you can imagine that some set of tax credits would go along with the intellectual synergies that exist in Michigan to develop further specializations in the development of, uh, of automotive technology. And when you look around, we've got a number of new automobile plants in Michigan. Daimler uh, built a new engine plant at, uh, in Dundee. GM opened a battery plant in Brownstown Township recently. Ford spent uh, I guess about a billion dollars retooling the Wayne plant for the production of the new Focus. Uh, those are not necessarily always going to result in a whole lot of jobs. We have three steel mills in Michigan that have been recently renovated. Uh, I don't know that we want to disparage the future of the high-tech end of the automobile industry. I would think the state would want to encourage it and that there's a potential for considerable growth there. Medical sector. The medical sector in Michigan now employs about 175,000 more people than does vehicle manufacturing. There's every reason to think this is going to increase in Michigan, perhaps at a slower rate. Detroit, some people can be pessimistic about Detroit, but Detroit Medical Center is going to spend $800 million in the next 10 years to expand their facilities. Henry Ford says they're going to spend $500 million to expand their facilities. Oakland University is going to open a medical school. I think their incoming class is this fall. Western Michigan will have an incoming class of new medical students in 2011, and Central Michigan perhaps will follow shortly thereafter. So there's going to be increasing uh, need for people in the medical sector, and you might ask, who's going to pay for all of that? Well, Michigan's population, 65 and over, is going to double in the next 20 years. Sure, we'll see debates about Medicare, and we may see some truncation of funding in Medicare, but frankly, there are going to be uh, very substantial increases in medical spending as the population of Michigan gets older, and that's going to stimulate lots of new jobs in, uh, in the state of Michigan. 
energy. Almost every state has a commission, advisory board, or a legislative committee seeking to organize uh, new opportunities in the field of energy. Uh, I'm not sure Michigan's a leader in that, but I don't think Michigan is very far behind other states. There's a plant in Fenville that is apparently effectively converting cow manure into fertilizer and energy. There are two plants in the Detroit area that are burning urban trash, a strategy that's used very effectively in Denmark. Indeed, the Danes get 44% of their energy from burning trash. Uh, there was a Detroit consortium that involved the research universities next wind that sought to build a $99 million facility on Zug Island to test wind turbines. Unfortunately, the Obama administration sent that project to South Carolina, but that firm may continue to do uh, some development here in Michigan. Marathon spent $1.9 billion to modernize their refinery in southwest Detroit so that they can convert some of those oil sands from Alberta into energy. There are any number of possible opportunities for the development of energy. No one can predict what's going to happen, but Michigan is, um, is, should not be far behind in that. Promoting immigration and uh, with economic glo uh, globalization, Michigan may benefit from substantial foreign investments and from highly trained immigrants. Michigan's white population went down by 3% in the last decade. The African-American population went down by 1%. The Hispanic population of the state and the Asian population of the state both increased by 35%. And about a quarter of the Hispanics in the state of Michigan and about two-thirds of the Asians are immigrants from abroad. I think we would make a mistake in any state to overlook the contributions that immigrants may make if they are attracted to the state. But linked to that are foreign investments. We see a pattern of many firms, including some of the supplier firms in the automobile industries, being purchased by foreign concerns. As the globalization goes on, there's every reason to think that Michigan could capture some of those investments. I mentioned northern Michigan might be promoted as a popular tourist and recreation area. Uh, the Department of Agriculture classifies counties by type. And they have a retirement class and a, a retirement county set and another tourist county set. And many of the counties in mid to northern Michigan are in both of their sets. Those counties are the rural counties that seem to be growing because they offer amenities for people who wish to vacation or people who wish to retire. I mean, we have the stereotype that when you get to be 65 in Michigan, you look for a place in Florida to live. I think the next generation of baby boomers who've spent their lives sitting in offices rather than in fact working in factories and who have been uh, riding bicycles, running, uh, doing other kinds of very active things, many of them are going to find retirement opportunities in Michigan in which they can enjoy sailing in the summer, cross-country skiing in the winter, and watch the leaves turn. One advantage Michigan counties have is that they are linked by expressway to the major centers of the Midwest. The retirement counties in upper New York State cannot, uh, cannot make that claim. Uh, did I mention uh, metropolitan Detroit as a tourist and recreation location? Uh, Detroit, the downtown development has been pretty successful in Detroit. And, 300 million is being invested in the modernization of Cobo Hall. But uh, Detroit has a marvelous collection of architecture. In the suburban ring, there's Cranbrook and Henry Ford Museum and Greenfield Museum. I can imagine a time when a successful advertising campaign, spinning off perhaps from pure Michigan, would encourage people to stop in Detroit for a day or two when they fly from one coast to the other. There is enough to see and to do in the city and in the suburban ring to make it a very desirable, uh, both regional and national place to spend a couple of days seeing the unique assets that you find there. Agriculture, uh, Michigan's agriculture is very diverse. It receives very little attention, and it's never going to employ huge numbers of people. But the agriculture sector is thriving. The North American Trade Agreement was very beneficial to Michigan in that uh, the 
Mexican farms, except those that are oriented to growing crops for the United States, are not very efficient. So, 